There it is, year seven sound revision video. So first thing is, what is sound? Sound is the vibration of particles. They can be in a solid, a liquid, or a gas, but you do need particles for it to happen. Oh God, two S is terrible. Not two S's in gas. So here's our particles. If we can make them vibrate back and forth, we end up with sound which then gives rise to that saying, in space no one can hear you scream. Because out in space, there are no particles. And you could be this side, shouting as loud as you like. Nobody's going to hear you in space. Now, the more they vibrate, the louder the sound is. The faster they vibrate, the higher the pitch of the sound. Which takes us on to how to draw them. Now, we draw sound as waves. And a wave looks like this. We have the height of the wave, this part here we call the amplitude of the wave. Amp, lit, ood. Sounds like it's got a ch in it, but it hasn't. That tells us how loud the sound is. The other part of the wave is where you go from one part to another. So if I change colour, I use a red, I'll use here. If I take this part here and I move across until it repeats itself here, then what I've got is a wavelength. Wave length. It doesn't matter which part of the wave you choose, it's always until it repeats itself when you've got one whole wave. And we measure that either in meters or centimeters or millimeters. It is literally just the length. That gives rise then to how sounds sound different. If we change the loudness, we change the amplitude. If we have a small amplitude, we have a quiet sound. If we have a large amplitude, we have a loud sound. Pitch is how many waves there are per second. So if we have them packed together like so, then it is high frequency, we would say this is high pitch. If we have the waves spread out, and there aren't many per second, then we have low pitch sound. So this would be the high notes on the piano here, and these would be the low notes on the piano here. So this is loudness and pitch. Next. Hearing. How we hear. We have fantastic hearing. Uh, we just take it for granted. It just, just works and you never notice that you're even hearing things. So, sound travels in through the outer ear. Travels through the ear canal. Ear canal. And it hits the first bit of our, 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 our ear the ear drum. ear drum. Now your ear drum is a small flap of skin, very tight, just like a drum, drum a skin of a drum, and it's responsible uh, for, for turning the vibration of the air particles out here into mechanical motion in three tiny little bones in your body called your ossicles. Ossicle. I'm having a terrible night for spelling. Ossicles. Okay, and you'll find when you're older that'll be a quiz question in the pub. It usually is. Three smallest bones are in your ear. These ossicles, they vibrate and they change the air pressure inside another piece of your ear called your cochlea. And let's write that in. Cochlea. So inside your cochlea you have thousands if not millions of tiny, tiny little hairs. And as the air pressure inside your cochlea changes, these hair, the hairs inside your ear vibrate and that causes hearing. Now, the signal comes from your cochlea and it goes through a large nerve directly to your brain and this is called the auditory nerve. The auditory nerve. And that goes straight to your brain. You have a part of your brain dedicated to decoding speech, um, which you've been training all your life. And you just see people's lips move and hear it in your head. So that's hearing. Next, range. Humans don't kick in till about 20 hertz. At about 20 waves per second, you start hearing things. Um, we go up to about 20,000 hertz. Now, scientists cheat. We use killer. So killer hertz. And everything we hear is within that range. As you get older, that range decreases. 
Um, however, for bats, that range is huge. It's up around the 120,000 mark. 120 kilohertz mark. And that range that we cannot hear above, I'll shade it in red, we call this ultrasound. Ultra sound. And there is lots of ultrasound everywhere. Sounds we don't ever hear. We can use it to, well, a bit like a bat does, we use it to image inside the body. We look at the reflection coming off objects and by timing the reflection we can tell how far away things are. Bats use it for hunting, we use it for medical imaging. Next, units. There's a couple of units we've been using recently. Um, so just to be really clear on them, frequency is measured in hertz, with a Z on the end, big H, little Z. Loudness is measured in decibels, decibels, uh, dB, and speed is measured in meters per second. And I say speed because the next one is the big question at the end, measuring speed of sound. So let's begin. First thing you need is a person. Preferably awake with a stopwatch. Then you use a trundle wheel to measure out a distance away. And you get as far away as you can. Now we went about 130 metres, if memory serves me right. When you get there, you stand this end and you need something that makes a loud bang. We used symbols. And the theory being that light is far faster than sound. If you smash the symbols together, the light travels almost instantaneously, for us, to the person and the person sees it. At the point they see it, so when you see it, you start the stopwatch. You know that at that point that you see it, uh, stopwatch. You know at the point that you see it that sound has set off and it's on its way to you and you are timing how long that sound takes to get to you. When it arrives you hear it, so when you hear it you stop the stopwatch. Now in our case it was really quick. It was way less than a second, it was about a third of a second. Um, let's keep the numbers easy. Say the time was 0.5 seconds. Call that distance 150 because then I can do this in my head. Um, we can now work out how long, it, how fast sound was going to get from the person all the way across to the other person. And for that we're going to need to use an equation. The equation is a really simple one. It's speed unit meters per second is distance in meters divided by time in seconds. And so if we were 150 meters away and it took us half a second, 0.5 seconds, then if we put that in a calculator we get an answer of 300 meters every second. Now loads of error with this. Average human reaction time is about 0.2 2. And if what we're measuring is 0 0.4, 0 0.5, lots of human error. So it's always worth doing things three times and take an average. And if you do that, you start missing out human error. So hope this video has been helpful and good luck on Monday.